So I've got the passenger side transmission mount. Uh, kind of drilled and knocked out of place. This little brake line thing that was on the uh, strut tower. Got rid of that. Uh, little front subframe. Drag this out of the corner there using some round tubing. Kind of like how the Romans did it back in the day. One tube in front of the other. I actually broke the uh, pallet, so. All right, let's see if we can get this in place and make some motor mounts. So I got the engine in place. Just on a pallet. Just uh, mocking up some motor mounts. So of course you have to lift the car up and uh, get the engine underneath. Subframe's got to be out. A little front subframe piece. And so that's where I'm at. I'm pretty sure it's it's about where it needs to be from uh, all the photos I've gathered. It looks to me like it's uh, pretty well. I mean, the hood might actually close. They might be a half an inch lower than Hasport's mounts, which should be okay. Looks sick though. What's going on guys? I'm just at the point now where I'm starting to make uh, some custom brackets for the uh, K24. I've already gone ahead and pretty much made this side mount. Uh, let me get some light on. So that's the transmission side mount there that I've gone ahead and made. Pretty much uh, similar to what Hasport has designed for this swap, except I'm utilizing the uh, D-Series motor mounts so basically this one uh, there was a pin going through it you knock that pin out and then you flip it upside down and sure enough the holes pretty much line up there to where you can get that mount I was making on the bench in there I'm gonna line that up so I've got that one to finish welding I've got this one to kind of finish making the engine is uh, almost in place. It needs to come over a little bit, of course. Here you can see there's a bit of a gap, which is good because the way my mounts are is uh, I gotta come over a bit. So, uh, and then I gotta make that little transmission mount down there, weld the bracket onto the subframe. So that's pretty much where we're at. I'm just gonna show you this real quick. So this is, uh, I mean, Hasport pretty much uh, came up with this idea, so I'll have to give credit to them. I did use some pictures that they supplied on the internet for reference, but I am utilizing the D-Series motor mounts, so that's going to be the difference here. Maybe one day I'll, I'll throw a template package that you can download or something on the internet and print it out, maybe. But for now, let's get these made and make sure it works. You got to get your coffee, scissors. I'm using 6-inch plate steel. Uh, sorry, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick by 6 inches wide. And that seems to be the perfect uh, size for uh, especially the transmission mount side. That's the height basically right there of what you need. Uh, it's just on a little bit of an angle, of course. But uh, got the grinder, the welder, some drills, and uh, that's where we're at here. So we're going to keep going on it. Basically, um, yeah, I just lined up some pieces, cardboard, placed it in place, see, you know, seeing if it was going to work. 
Um, of course, this isn't done yet. I've got to uh, weld on some corner tabs for some more support here, of course. And that'll kind of tie this area together. And then same with this side. Same thing, you know. Tie all that together. And then uh, depending on how much clearance I have back here, I was going to weld a plate across like this. I might actually have to go on top. I'm not sure, depending on the clearance, how far I have to come back with the D-series mounts. So I probably could have made this a little longer. But for now, we're just going to go with that. Coffee first, and we'll get to it. All right, so I got my next pieces there, those little square chunks. Just cut them out with the grinder. And I always uh, lay my stuff on a flat surface, so this uh, plate steel is pretty flat surface. So as you can see, there's a little, a little bit of light coming through there. That's only because it's actually raised on both sides here. It's kind of hard to tell but it's on the metal on that one, just to bump it back a bit. So I'm gonna tack those in place. Might actually shave that one down a bit. It looks like it's sticking a little proud, so maybe flip it around, it might fit better. Let's weld that up. All right, got those tacked in place. And by tack, I mean just you know, a little dimple there, a little dimple there, dimple there, dimple there. That way when you go to put it in, if it's not quite right, you can knock it off with a hammer and try again. So I'm going to let that cool down for just a minute. And then uh, do a little test fit. It's probably pretty hot still. I mean, that's what we're coming up with so far. Not as nice as Hasport, but come on, it's only cost me uh, $40 for the metal so far, so. See, that one's a little proud. So I gotta either just smooth that out or knock it off with a hammer and try again, so. So I just took the grinder and flushed that out so I didn't have to knock it off. Mind you, it's not quite 100% 90. We'll see how this turns out. Go test fit it. So let's do just a quick little test fit here. See where we're at. So, pretty much, I gotta take off just a little bit off that corner. And we're still touching there. I can either hit that with a hammer or just feather that out a little bit. Maybe I think I'll do that. Fits in nice right there. As soon as you try to go a little bit back. Okay, so... Huh. Other than that. Kind of looks like it's meant to be this side. I will pull that out and throw it on the bench and show you guys in a minute. But I really need to get this side done. So... Let's finish notching that a bit. And then we can drill a couple holes. Uh, the engine does need to move over just a little bit. A teeny little bit, not much, but. It's coming along. So a little notch on that corner. And possibly right here just a little bit I'd rather just knock that in a little bit but I'm trying to keep it as uh, user-friendly as possible I guess you could call it so if you're thinking this is a little too much for you and you just don't have the time or the tools to make these mounts you could go with Hasport EFK4 mounts. They're a decent price. 
at about $700 Canadian, which is about $10 US, so it's a pretty good deal. No, it's not $10 US, but uh, you get the point. This is a lot of work, but all in all, it is going to save money for the build. Instead of spending $700, i am spending $40 and maybe $15 on some welding wire and uh, grinding discs. So, let's just uh, keep hacking away at this piece of metal. 3 16 So, motor mount's kind of uh, just in place there right now. Uh, my bolt holes, pretty darn close. Engine, pretty darn close. Needs to go just maybe a hair back and a hair up, I think. I'm using a pallet for clearance, plus some other, I think I got a 2x4 under there, something like one of those blocks on the one side to kind of keep it level. It is out a little bit, that side's going to come up, and so does this side. Of course the alternator's in the way, it hits right here, but we can modify that a little bit. Um, so I guess now, like I already made that little notch out of there let's just pull this out here I'm gonna make that little notch and that little notch to kind of get over that lip I'm thinking I have to notch this as well so I can go left to right because it's bottomed out right now so if I notch this out just like this should have plenty of movement and clearance to get in there to where we need to be. And once those two are in place, I'm gonna try to uh, hang the engine so we can get that back tranny mount, which I think is gonna be probably the hardest. I've already got my templates for it, it's just really tight in there and kind of should have made them with the engine out but you don't know where it is until you get there so let's keep going on it there's the uh, passenger side tranny bracket from the D series you gotta drill them out you gotta drill these top two out so it sits like that so drill those top two those four in the middle and then the four in the bottom two in either side this one corner is near impossible to get to so once these are off and you kind of just pry it out then you can shave off the rest with a grinder or whatever all right so now i'm in line here i'm using this uh valve cover plastics as reference just because it's pretty much uh square on the valve cover so Looks like I'm pretty good there now. So we got, we went back a little bit. Um, I think we're exactly where we need to be at this point. It is just uh, getting that height equal on either side. You can see on the left side there, it's the motor's a little bit higher than the right side. I could lower this side down a bit or raise that side but I think I'm gonna lower this side a little bit just so I know I have uh, enough hood clearance as well I know I'm gonna have to notch it regardless when you look down there it's it's pretty much flush just about flush so once we get these two dealt with then uh, we can move on to that back one I've already got my templates so, let's get her done, I guess. So the motor is in place. I've already gone ahead and tested it by jacking the car up. And the motor comes with it. Um, we ended up being, I'd say nearly an inch underneath that string line, which would be technically the top of the hood. So if my calculations are correct, an inch thickness would make it um, 
just barely touching so I think we're pretty much good to where we need to be um, that little bump out we all know that comes right around this corner like that and so I've literally just got that in with two self tapping screws and it was able to pick the whole engine up no problem of course when you try to lift the engine up it wants to tilt back and that's why we got to get that last mount in the rear dealt with now which is going to be the fun one because it's really tight in there I did make my cardboard templates first but uh, I think where we're at now is uh, getting pretty close here it's getting pretty close just got an abundance of random tools kicking around so I've got the engine back out to make this uh, final mount in the rear here this one so I've got my piece going off of there and then this one goes through there of course I need to connect them they are at about the right angle they need to be so what I did was I took a uh, marking across from the one that's bolted right in there so I gotta weld my two tabs to the subframe and then uh, that should be it that's where it needs to be now the other one is just the uh, stock location well this one here Either way, that's going to sum it up for today, guys. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.